That's all you got to do if you want to get the better part of 3,000 horsepower out of this Mattingly machine prepared 572 cubic inch power plant inside of Jaron Nelson's two wheel drive truck. We're going pro pulling, baby. It's all about the truck pulling here tonight with Lucas Oil on the edge. Ken Stow with you. We're here at Concord Motorsports Park, and these guys are going to pull these things right down the historic pit road here. It's about dragging that sled across the full pull mark. And if you can do that, well, who knows? You might bring home the gold here tonight. Let's talk about this truck. It is a spectacular piece of machinery. This one brand new. It only has about four pulls on it. These guys came out with it. They're tinkering with it. Every truck has something unique to it. They all carry the front ends a little bit higher than the other. So what do they want to do? They want to find that sweet spot. When that front end does come up in the air, how do they steer it? Well, check out my feet right here. These things have steering brakes. Obviously, the left rear wheel, right rear wheel, because the front end, if it's doing what it's supposed to do, is up in the air. Now you can also pick a couple of different gears. If you see the gear levers here, this one actually has a five-speed gearbox in it. So he'll be busy inside here, but he wants to pick that one gear and stick with it all the way through the pool. Now, the most critical thing on these trucks is applying weight. This is a 6,200-pound class. They add about 1,800 pounds of additional weight to get to that 16,200-pound mark. Now, as you take a look at that, they can actually move the better part of 800 pounds from the front to the rear. You can hear the guys back there are actually warming up. So I've had enough of this. Oh, by the way, Jared's wife, Bethany, she's with child, so he's hoping he can bring home a truck. But right now, Note to the Nelson family, get Ken Stout out of that truck as soon as possible. Well, of course, what is the object? The object of that two-wheel drive is to pull this sled. This one is called, apropos, the decision maker because it basically makes a decision whether you're getting past 300 feet or not. Right now, initially, when they start to pull this thing, it weighs about 44,000 pounds. But when you get to about the 200-foot mark, that is when the weights start to roll. And you better hold on and you better hope that you have really dug into that dirt because here's why. You've got a skid plate on the bottom. It starts to lower, it drops into that dirt, and at about the 250 foot mark, you are pulling five times the weight of this sled. Do the math, that's quarter of a million pounds that a two wheel drive super modified truck is pulling. Wow, I'm just happy to be alive. I'm getting off this thing. Let's get rolling. Thanks a lot, Ted. All right, let's go to the general tire two wheel drive truck category. We'll start things off with Dan Walsh. The Irish Challenger, and I welcome Leslie Mears to the booth. Well, I'm excited to be here, but not as excited as I am to see these big time horsepower trucks lay it down on this Carolina play. And Leslie Walsh with the front end way up in the air right there at the end of the pole. You're going to look for all that transfer of the weight to the rear tires. That's where all your business is going to take place. You can really see the dirt moving up to the pan of the sled, and you can see it collecting back there. This Carolina clay, a lot different than the surfaces that these guys run on during the year, and it's all about figuring it out early. A lot of these guys are actually concerned about getting hooked up here on this clay tonight. By the way, Mother Nature threatening has spit on us just a little bit, but so far we're okay. Steve Jacks, two-wheel drive truck called Pair of Jacks. And Steve Jacks with a rich history in motorsports used to drive a super modified tractor with four engines on it. So he's used to driving something with 12,000 horsepower. So 3,000 horse, not going to be a big deal for him to try to get hooked up to the track. He goes full throttle, 291.22, won't be enough to get past the 300.91 foot mark. And we've yet to set the full pull mark, Leslie. We always wait five vehicles with the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League to set that full pull mark. Because the dirt is different at every track, we want to see how the vehicles are going to react and just how well they can hook it up. These guys make 3,000 horsepower, but that doesn't mean a thing if you can't hook it up to those rear tires and drag that sled down the track. 
Come on back. We've just gotten started with those monster two-wheel drive trucks. This On the Edge telecast is brought to you by Lucas Oil Products. Made in America, sold to the world. General Tire. And by Herculiner Truck Bed Liners, when the tough come easy. Welcome back as we watch the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League here and Steve Jacks back in yet another truck, Leslie. Well, this is the pair of Jacks. Steve got a definite advantage over his other competitors because he's already been out here and seen what the tracks looks like. And you see him in the exact same route he ran before. And unfortunately, he didn't pay off. He actually went a little bit shorter this time. Looks like he drove it down the left side of the track. Looks like he got the same hole shot, but as he drifted off to the side with his run, maybe not getting hooked up in the back on each tire squarely. These guys don't have pause attraction, where each one of the rear wheels spins at the same time. So he could be getting a little bit more traction on the one side, just pulling him off to the edge. And of course, you always have to deal with engine torque as well. Bob Martin and the Grim Reaper will be up next to GMC. Great look at the butterflies up there, just slowly coming open. They methodically apply that horsepower, as you mentioned before. I mean, if you hit it, hit the throttle too early, too quickly, they just gonna blow the tires off of it. But if you take a look at Bob here, the Grim Reaper just really just waits, wait, and waits some more, and he doesn't get after it soon enough. If he would have got after it a little bit sooner, he could have extended the distance on his run. Well, of course, Concord Motorsport Park is a very historical raceway. It's NASCAR sanctioned. This oval has been around for a long, long time. So how do you get a dirt track? Well, it's pretty simple. Not so simple, actually. Get a bunch of guys here from PPL and build a dirt track. What I find interesting about this is it starts with about an inch or two of sawdust. And then they bring in eight inches of Carolina clay, pack it down, bring in eight more inches. That means what class? 16 inches of Carolina clay, and they're hoping this thing really digs. It's going to be looser than pretty much any other track in the nation, but that's what makes it fun. That's what makes it a driver's track. And when he says looser, obviously he's talking about they won't be able to get us hooked up at this track as they do at some of the others. Stan Shelton coming out here. What an awesome looking truck. General Tire all down the side of that one, trying to go to the lead. Getting it done, too. Travis Roffler from General Tire is here in attendance. 30277, and he just made him very proud. This is where you take advantage of being aggressive. The General Tire cutting edge, very aggressive. Look there, the butterflies wide open, full throttle all the way. He's carrying the front end really, really well. You see that dirt kicking up behind the rear end and that last launch effort to push out his mark. Okay. All right, Stan, you got two chances to win tonight. You're driving two trucks, but not bad right now. Early on, first place as we sit here, 302.77. How'd it feel? Felt real good. It, uh, it's, it, the sled's making a good transition out of the hole. You got a feather. You really got to drive it at uh, half track. Uh, if you ain't got your front end up at half half track, you're probably in trouble. So made a good pass. Motor sounded good on the other end. I want to thank General Tire for a corporate sponsorship. Without them, won't be able to be here. I'll tell you one thing. It's probably really good to go early because as it goes on, as you know, this man-made track is going to get real loose. Yeah, it could build a road, as in pulling terminology for us. If it gets tighter for us, they get more speed coming out of the hole, we'll be in trouble. But hopefully, it'll go away a little bit and then we'll stay out front. You can't just sit and wait, dude. You got to get another truck now. I know. Hopefully, other trucks in the last of the class. So if track gets better, maybe we can transition. That one. Oh, it's the beauty of having two different machines, as do the Tatums. Tony Tatum inside of this one called Extreme Pleasure, and we'll see his daughter come out here and pull in the class in just a little while. time coming out of the hole, but when he decided to go with it, man, he definitely stepped on the throttle hard. 296.67, the mark. 
and you saw all the transfer away there. Something interesting about this not being solid dirt underneath. These guys don't worry about building that road and the moisture coming up, making the track better. That's where Stan may have the edge with it going away just a little bit. You can see the lawn to the front end coming just about now, and he really gets out there, just waits too long. It looked like the front end never quite came up as high as he'd wanted. Hey, there's Boris Lucas. Rico, the whole gang is here. The gang is all here at the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League, including the big cheese. Even Forrest Lucas is with us. Jared Nelson, the Midnight Revenger, up next. And take a look at that Chevrolet, man. Talk about a wide body. When you talked about it's a brand new truck on the circuit this year, went out first night with his motor, blew it up, so got it reman. It's all new, his first outdoor event with it. And Jared Nelson will lay up just a little bit short as well, 286.7 the distance. And check out how close to the sideline the Midnight Revenger placed itself when he came off the starting line. That's the beauty of truck and tractor pulling. You got 40 feet between the white lines to place the sled. No one had been over on that sideline, so he was hoping he would get some fresh dirt off the starting line, a good place to dig in those tires, somewhere where the grouser bars on the sled had not been, that he could pick up more traction and be that he went looking for it, didn't quite find it. Next up, Jordan Nelson with the Midnight Madness. Team truck here. Going to take a little bit of information from that Midnight Revenger. You see he's moved back over towards the center of the track. His brother told him, hey man, it's not there. You got to do something else. It looked like Jordan went right down the center of the track. Unfortunately, not the best results for him either. Take yourself back to the run of the general tire cutting edge. It went right down the center of the track. Stan Shelton even made the comment himself that they might be able to build a road out there. And Jared Nelson thought that he may be able to follow in those footsteps of that general tire cutting edge. But the surface is just not there. And you see the track just pulling them off to the side there just a little bit. So you're going to hit the throttle here. You can also see some smoke out of the bottom of the truck. And so it might have been running just a little bit rich. So maybe not making maximum power, although some of the guys are trying to take power out at this particular racetrack. And that's what they'll do. They'll actually richen them up a little bit. And they'll also take some timing out of them. Randy Hall coming up next in the Super Mule. It's a unique looking machine. Love that 38 Chevy. Don't tell him it's a Willie, so he's really mad at you. Oh, man, and the Super Mule was on a roll, and it sounded like the engine just quit right there at the very end. Usually when the engine quits like that, lack of fuel going into those cylinders. So a lot of times it's usually a throttle cable when something like that happens. And you can see he's really moving. Gets out there a little bit, kicking up the dirt, got it going on, gets a little fish taily out there. But, man, draws the front end up at the end, and boom, it's over. Randy, you call this thing the Super Mule, man. She really kicked. Yeah, did a pretty good job, but I think something come apart in, in one of the planetaries. I'm not sure what happened. You had that crowd jumping, though, man. It, it was a nice, not so violent, but a fun run down there, and that's just an unfortunate thing. Well, you know, it started to unhook, and it wanted to go to the right when the left wheel quit turning, so I don't know. I'm new at this, so we'll, figure, we'll get it figured out. That's yeah, the beginning of the season, man. Yeah, there you go. That's how it goes. There's something in the drive line, Kevin Luce. Don't worry, we have plenty more to go. A former champion inside of the class, Lisa Tatum, coming out with a truck called the Full Throttle. Well, ladies, she can really drive it out there and does a, a lot of work on the engine, keeps up with everything, got some big-time fancy footwork in there. She's more than just a hired gun. She's a mechanic, too. Three hundred point nine seven feet for Lisa Tatum, and she's going to lay up just a little bit short of that three hundred two mark as well. But a really nice job, the furthest pull we've seen in a number of trucks. That'll move her into the number two spot by six hundredths of a foot. She does a really good job of being aggressive. We saw that with Stan Shelton and the General Tire Cutting Edge. That's what it's going to take out here on the track. And of course, she was standing out here watching her father, Tony, when he made his pull. She takes that data, she takes that knowledge, goes back and sets her truck up. Not afraid to stand on the throttle hard. She will put that engine through its paces, and it shows right there.
does a great job getting the front end up. Good transfer. You see, she's really pumped up about it. We'll continue on. Next up, will he make it? Driven by Ricky Long. Ricky Long, another one of those tough competitors inside of this category. Finished in the Lucas Oil Pro Bowling League Champion Store circuit second behind his brother last year. He's tired of playing second fiddle and looking for that championship. Two ninety four seventy six, well short of the full pole mark that has been set at three hundred ten feet. In fact, we haven't seen anybody get close to that one just yet. But right here, the front end hopping just a little bit. Anytime you get that bounce, that means that you're not hooking up those rear tires to the track. Those bounces going to cost you five to ten feet when your distance comes out at the end. All right, man, you and I were talking earlier today. You, this track is just tough. It's hard to get a grip on it. When you, it's hard to hook, and you were having a little trouble with it. It is. We, we've made a lot of major changes right there at the starting line at the last second. There's a lot of moisture in this. It's a man-built track, you know, from the ground up. It's about 16 inches deep, and uh, if, if you hit it, you're a hero. If you miss it, you're, you're a little bit off. I was just a touch off. I think I had a little too much horsepower in it for my gear. We've got another shot, so we'll be out back there trying it. To, this Lucas Oil Series, hey, you got to be on the game every night or somebody's going around you. There are a lot of variables there, and it's very easy to miss the mark. The window is very narrow. Daryl Varner in the rear breed up next. The Blue Oval fans hoping for a Ford to win here tonight. Can he get it done? And Leslie, I never really saw him transfer the weight. The front end never really came up. And that's crucial with these super modified two-wheel drive trucks. Only 6,200 pounds. So you've got to get the front end up to get the maximum weight on those rear tires. He also fishtails a little bit. You talk about moisture on the track. The whole idea is to keep the sled directly behind you so that once the box tops off and those browser bars dig in, you're dragging it straight down the track. That, of course, is the game that we were talking about at the beginning of this poll. How much weight do you move from the front to the rear or vice versa? How much air pressure do you put in them? How much gear do you decide to run with? There's a lot of variables there along with adjustable horsepower. We'll continue in a moment. This On the Edge telecast has been brought to you by Lucas Oil Products. Made in America, sold to the world. General Tire. And by Herculiner Truck Bed Liners. When the tough come easy. We're down to the final pullers here at the Lucas Oil Pro Pulling League. Keith Long, the defending champion inside of the category, inside of a truck called the Bullseye. We'll have his work cut out for him if he's going to catch Dan Shelton tonight. He's going to get all the information from the Willie Make It on his brother's previous run. So hopefully they've gained some kind of knowledge about this track. Remember, it's been a long time since our first vehicle in the class has ran. So there could be a lot of changes out here. Not too many between those two trucks. So he should have a definite advantage. Plenty of weight transfer there, 297.61. He was churning up the dirt in the back of that truck. Just didn't have quite enough bite here tonight, and maybe this track has, in fact, gone away a little bit. A little bit. He does a great job of getting the front end up in the air early, being aggressive, getting it up, transferring the weight. It looks beautiful as he moves down the track until he gets about to that 250-foot mark. That's when you're going to see the front end launch, and that's what they call hooking it up right there. You see it, and then it slams down on the ground. And we're not finished yet. Stan Shelton coming back out here one more time. This is the second truck called the Sawmill Express, one just as beautiful as the next. A long time since his first run. He's looking to do the one-two punch here. Not going to get the one two out of it, 298 33, but he will get the one out of it, trying to beat his own mark that he'd set earlier in the competition. 
Well, it has been a long time since he ran, but he does a great job of staying in that same track. You can see that the front tires are coming up early. He's still being really aggressive. A little bit of fuel coming out of the cylinder. Shooting those ducks there, gonna hurt him. Only seven cylinders there, one down. You're gonna need all the horsepower you can get to make it happen. So a misfire out of one of those holes will cost him that one, two, but Stan Shelton does get the win, followed by the talented Lisa Tatum and Dan Walsh rounds out the top three in the competition here tonight. We just, hey, you don't get too many opportunities to make a perfect run. We just made a perfect run with that truck. A lot of good trucks came behind us. Uh, we just got it done tonight. We want to thank General Tire for their financial support coming on with us this year. That's what got us down the track. You didn't need to really pull that last truck, but I know, A, you're doing it for show for the fans, and B, you wanted to really take that one-two punch. You didn't get the second place, but all that matters is first. And on top of everything, you get a brand-new parts washer. So I know that thing's dirty, man. You could use it. Man, we, we really appreciate Safety Clean for stepping up and giving us this parts washer. Believe me, we'll use it during the year because we drove off track night, but some nights we won't drive off track, so we're scattered on the track. But uh, we appreciate all the fans' support. The fans come out tonight. Fantastic show. We gave it all we got. Appreciate General Tire being there for us. It's a long season, bro. Have a good time. Long season. We struggled last year. It's our first win of the year. We didn't have a win at all last year, so we're stoked and ready to go. Thank you. Ready to go. You're going to win one. Win one in front of your sponsors. Hey, make sure you log on to NewWaveTV.com to find out where the Dairies RV and OTE crew is going to next. For Ted Brunson and Leslie Mears, I'm Ken Stout.